Stop right there. Yeah, you. If you like all things entertainment, current events, or Hollywood, then look no further. Creator to Creators, hosted by director Mio Shabin of Horror Noir, interviews filmmakers and creatives from around the world. Join in on the fun, guest celebrities, and informative information to have as a creator. Hit subscribe and stay connected to Creator to Creators. A troubled R&B prodigy played by singer-songwriter Anthony Honoré and the ghost of a beautiful singer played by newcomer Jordan White join forces to fight a demonic evil that is unleashed when a long-lost demo tape is played. This is Jam of the Damned. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Creators to Creators Today. Today we have special guest. Hi, I'm Aaron Mento. How you doing? I'm a writer-director. What's up, guys? This is your boy Honore here, star of the movie and the composer of the soundtrack. All right. So I like to open up just a, just a brief like introduction of how like for those who are listening, like the listeners who don't really know much about what you guys do. Give me a little brief introduction of how you got into the business and then kind of, you know, like, you know, what you're doing now. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, real quick, I started out um, as a screenwriter and uh, I was kind of waiting for the right time to make my first movie. Um, I was waiting too long though. And what happened was I had a day job, lots of Excel spreadsheets and um, my left eye went blind one day. Like I couldn't see out of it while I was, I was just doing all these spreadsheets. And um, I was afraid, I was afraid I had like brain cancer or something like that. It really freaked me out. I went to a bunch of doctors and finally we figured I was just an ocular migraine, which is like literally like a headache in your eye. Wow. And I was just putting my eyes through too much stress, but I took that as a sign that like, I need to get off my ass and make a movie uh, right now. Like time is short. Don't wait for it. Yeah. So I made my first movie. Uh, the only camera I had was an iPad, like a really old iPad. And so I shot the whole movie on an iPad. Wow. And yeah, it was the first movie ever made on a tablet. So we got a lot of good press <laughs> from that, but that was really the only camera I had. So, um, Jumping off from that, just uh, meeting cool people um, and eventually coming across uh, Honore, who uh, worked on my movie Ugly Sweater Party, which is like a cult, campy, holiday horror movie. And uh, yeah, so uh, jumping off from that, we're now making this new movie, Jam of the Damned, and um, we'll jump into that more. But that's just a quick intro for me. Awesome. Nice, nice. So yeah, hey guys, um, this is Honore. I'm here in Los Angeles. I'm an R&B singer, songwriter, producer, been in the business for some years now, professionally, and just working through the trials of life to create and uh, continue to build my brand with music. But then uh, met up with uh, the amazing Aaron Mentel here. And like you said, we, we worked on his uh, awesome film, Ugly Sweater Party. And uh, it was a really eye opener into the horror world, which I love, you know. Um, and I basically have been in the music sector, um, never really delved too much into the acting and all that stuff. Um, but since hooking up with Aaron, it's definitely helped me out to to open my eyes and give me the confidence to to kind of go in that gear in that direction in a sense. So, you know, he hit me up during COVID about this uh, idea, about this horror movie project. And uh, it just kind of like hit me like this is where I need to be, you know, so Happy to be a part of this project and happy to be here with you, Yosha. Aw, thank you guys. I mean, I think you guys are awesome. And for those who don't know, so yeah, Jam of the Damned. So tell me a little bit about how this project came about. I love the title. Um, it's, and I just think that it's, I think people are going to really dig it. So, so tell me a little bit about how this came about. And sure. Yeah. So, um, I consider myself kind of like a receiver. So I always am open to new ideas. And um, I really wanted to do a horror musical. And I was working with um, a metal band for a little bit on a project. And that project fell through. And it felt like it was good that it fell through because it didn't feel like it was really fitting yet. And I just went, I was just sitting there going like, who do I want to collaborate <laughs> with? And I was like, I want to collaborate with Honoré because Honoré and I both love Prince. That's how we kind of first bonded. Uh, we're both yeah, like, like Prince is just like huge for both of us. So that's kind of like how we Prince and horror movies. And so <laughs> I, I just reached out I, and it was like, literally, I, I can't remember if I reached out to him or he reached out to me on that day, the same day that I came up with that. 
both of our schedules opened up and we opened a line of communication and we were both kind of thinking the same thing. Let's do a project together. And um, it just kind of stemmed from that. And I, I usually work intuitively with actors and with creators and, and collaborators. So I'm inspired by other people. So just talking with actors or other creatives, I can, I can get ideas for what we're going to collaborate on. And so just from that first meeting with Honoré, I already had some ideas from the previous project, but as soon as I talked about it with him, I could see it going in a completely different direction, a direction that I liked more, which is more like Purple Rain meets Evil Dead, yeah. um, which is like two of my favorite things. So um, yeah, that's kind of like how it started. And then um, of course we had to have you on here uh, as producer, Miosha, because uh -huh. uh, we've both been wanting to work with you for so long and uh, the stars finally aligned on the project. So yeah, so that's kind of how it all began. I, I think it and and thank you so much for having me. Like I, you know, I, you know, Aaron, we go back to the uh, group, the writers group, uh, yeah. you know, and just we we definitely were. I definitely wanted to work with you for the beginning. I was like, I don't know what, <laughs> but I I know that something is going to come, and I and I'm glad yeah, likewise. that. Yeah. This is um, the, you know, the beginning of many many projects to come, but so. Jam of the Damned. Okay, so for those that don't know, like, why should why is this movie important to to be to be made, and why do you think this should people should watch this film? I'm just curious. I think it's important because it's you know when I talked to the honorary about this movie, I said I don't want to make a movie that's just going to go on a streaming platform and get lost in an ocean. I want to make a movie that is people's favorite movie. And something about this concept, um, I'll be looking through my movie collection, I'll be scrolling through and I cannot find what I want to watch. And it's because what I want to watch is this movie, mm. this movie, for, for whatever reason, wants to be made. And I want to see it more than anybody um, as a fan of of Prince, as a fan of Honoré, as a fan of, you know, horror. And I'm a huge uh, musical fan. Um, music has always been kind of central to my movies and to finally just jump right in to do a musical. Um, the, the feeling of expressing myself in a medium that I love so much that I haven't had a chance to yet is, uh, is very important to me and to do it with people that, you know, I care about and that I think are very talented, uh, is that, that's why I want to do this. And I think we're going to make something that is going to stand the test of time, something that people are going to want to revisit over and over again um not something disposable not something for a quick buck something that i think people are going to really um see themselves in and uh, relate to and i think they're going to have a fun time with it absolutely and i you know and, and you know down to the you know i got to hear some of this this the soundtrack the music behind it the the great honore himself the man himself here right here <laughs> the composer like i mean that's a big job that's a big like shoes to fill like when you're talking about prince and you know you know this kind of feel that you're trying to you know uh to create for the film the the feel like how how did you go into it like not trying to i guess be prince but like to just to make you know, like to bring that memory into the film, but how do you like end it, but make it your style, like Honoré? Yeah, um, I think just kind of immersing myself within the project, reading the script, <clears throat> that was the, the main thing. It's like, um, um, you know, because I'm in the mus music business and, um, you know, I've had some um, songs and different things placed in other projects. So it's just a matter of creating what their their uh, direction is, you know, and, and having that marriage of the music that works well within that particular scene or whatever. <clears throat> so this was a, a, a full-fledged uh, fully feature film. I'm like, whoa, this is really deep here, you know. And since I'm a student of Prince, you know, I like to create everything from scratch and play everything and write everything and produce. And, you know, it's 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 not easy, but when you do something from the heart and it, it doesn't feel like work or anything, it just, it just flows, you know? And uh, within, and I, like I said, to piggyback off of Aaron, you know, like we both love Prince. Um, we both love horror movies and Evil Dead. So it's like, whoa, mm -hmm. what would this look like? And just as importantly, what would that sound like? So, you know, Jam of the Damn, you know, when, when, he told because we were kind of going back and forth as far as what the title of the movie could be, and we had different ideas and stuff like that. But when 
when uh, we landed on Jam of the Dam, they were, it was a really cool because it's like jam is the music aspect, you know? Yeah. Dam part is like the lost souls, you know, that are just in this abyss and limbo, you know? And it's like, whoa. So when I was just kind of going into it, I just don't think about it too much. I, tr I try my best to feel the pain. I, I try my best to feel the the, the emotion of the movie and the underlining um, the storyline and everything. And then it just flows. So we have something very special here, guys. Jam up the day. If you guys like what you hear today on this show and want to get involved in the process of making this movie, Jam of the Dam, come to life, please don't hesitate to reach out to us via email, which is in the description box below of this podcast. Make sure you just share and get the word out because this film is going to be epic. All right, guys, hope you guys enjoy the rest of the show. Definitely, definitely. Aaron, Aaron it, I mean, guys, I, it really, I'm just so excited for this because I don't think I've seen anything quite like this. And when I tell people about it, like, they're just like, I, I was actually talking to a writer friend. Uh, he saw the poster that we put, that I posted. He he inboxed me, he goes, wow, that looks, that looks interesting. And I was like, yeah. I was like, what, 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 like, why does it pop to you? And he's like, it, it's just, it's like kind of where he said it reminds him a little bit of um, the Miles Morales uh, kind of like. Oh, style. sure. Yeah. I was yeah, like, oh, yeah, wow, yeah. I didn't think of anything yeah. like that. That's definitely got a little bit. Yeah. Wow. And he was like, but it also just you just like, oh, it's like, what is it like jam of the damn? What could that mean? And um, he actually uh, talked. He said something about the uh, queen of the damn. Um, with Aaliyah and I was like oh that's really interesting that's wow because like that's you know that's it was that kind of like the cons the sat like were did you, I'm have you I'm obviously you've seen the movie but yeah I, I think that movie why it did so well too uh Queen of the Dam it the soundtrack was so epic I mean the, yeah. the movie when I watch it I listen to it, it, the visuals were amazing but I think that every thing in the sound just you just like wow <laughs> like I want to be yeah. in this movie so bad like it just had this like yeah. amazing crazy soundtrack absolutely yeah that was actually a big influence on it for sure I like Queen of the Dam. I think it's underrated it is I think uh I've read the book I heard everybody says the book is you know so much better all I can go off is the movie but the movie the vibe of the movie I really like I love the mix of the kind of like goth alternative music and vampires and then you know, the queen rising up and the flavor of that. And um, <laughs> yeah. Aaliyah was so great in that. Oh, and she was. Such mm -hmm. a loss because who knows what she would be doing now. She was so good on camera. She had such a presence. Um, so yeah, so I love, what I love about Queen of the Damned is I love uh, that, that character, the queen, how she's able to, uh, like her movements and how she's yes. able to manipulate and how she's able to hypnotize. And we have some of that in our main character, Jean Modine. A little bit of a tribute to that um and just to go into the story a little bit uh we're going to be introducing a very special actress named jordan white she's going to be making her debut in jam of the damned and it's a really interesting part because she has to play basically multiple sides of the same character she's playing um i guess you would say a a good kind of earthly spirit version of the character and then she's playing one right from hell and so <laughs> she gets to play that duality. So it's a, it's going to be a really cool role. And so we're going to see a little bit of that, that Queen of the Damned in there for sure. How important was it for you? Like, as far as like, you know, casting, you know, and and then, you know, you I mean, obviously you, you're the writer and you know what you, you know what you want. And you, I mean, that part I'm sure is, is, is very kind of sometimes can be difficult, but um, that process of casting, I'm sure, how did that go for you? Was it pretty smooth, would you say? I don't think it was smooth. It was, uh, we had a lot of people audition That's and, awesome. um, you know, Jordan just got it. She got how to tell a story through, through Honoré's music and yeah. she got how to inhabit the character in a way that didn't get in the way of the music. It all just kind of vibed together. And, uh, Honoré's working with her right now on, uh, on a song That's and so she's good. in New York. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, we, we found her all the way out in New York and she blew us away. And I made sure that Honoré saw the audition too. I wanted to make sure that he thought, you know, she had this, the pipes for, for the music to do his music justice. And he was oh, like, absolutely. hell yeah. 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 And just piggybacking off of the casting, <clears throat> when Aaron brought this, um, this project to me, you know, um, I was pretty adamant about, you know, as far as like the actress, the co-lead uh, co to be black, you know, a person of color, um, 
it was important for me to to have that you know to, because this is going to be amazing you know mm -hmm. and i just feel like i felt that it was important to continue to keep pushing that you know and and nothing taken away from any other race or anything like that but you know this was something that was important to me and i felt like as we're reading the script and and reading my character and just trying to see that merger to have two you know black male black actress uh to kind of like really be in this movie and not dying within the first 20 minutes of the movie, <laughs> you know but being that it was really important because we have some you know actually a lot more um horror movies with you know black leads but you know the more the merrier you know and just with the storyline and how it mixes with not just R&B music within the soundtrack, but there's rock, you know? So yeah. Aaron, Aaron pulled me, like, he challenged me, like, look, look, you know, we need this and <laughs> got an edge and stuff like that. And that's where the Prince aspect comes in because Prince wasn't just one type of genre of music. He was a mixture of funk and R&B and rock and soul and everything. So I did my best to sit in that, that chair. And uh, so I'm happy that Jordan White is our, our, our Jean Modine and, and it's going to blow your socks off when the people see it. I just know it. Mm -hmm, excited. Mm -hmm. uh, do, you know, I love what you said about, you know, so Aaron, and I'm, and I'm curious, you know, as a writer, director in this industry, how is, how important is diversity to you? Sure. I mean, like, well, here's the thing. It's like when, when I grew up in the nineties, all I saw was black entertainment and it was what I loved the most. It was, um, I feel like there was like this lost foggy era when black entertainment was dominant and was everywhere. And it just kind of like went away and it's coming back, but it's coming back in a way that feels kind of controlled and kind of restricted. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody kind of feels that a little bit. And so, um, so I'm like a student of like John Singleton, the Hughes brothers, Ernest Dickerson. I love all that stuff. I mean, like I grew up, when I grew up watching HBO, all I saw was, Black faces, black filmmakers, uh, you know, poetic justice was on every day. And it was like, you know, in living in living color was on every day. And it was just like that was just I, I didn't really look at it as um, black or white. It was just right. talent and and vibrancy and creativity. Mm -hmm. And um, I just vibe off other people's creativity, too. So Honoré is a friend of mine. We both like Prince. We're both vibing on this project. We love Purple Rain. Yeah. It's like, it just makes sense. You know what I mean? To 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 make it diverse, make it colorful and make it alive, you know? Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it's interesting because like, you know, what you said, Honoré, about like just, you know, the leads. I feel like um, this is so important for, I think, culturally um, because it's, it's, it's stuff that, you know, um, I don't think I've seen this kind of, this done with a person of color. And, and as a lead, like this kind of movie. Um, so this is really exciting too. And it's, I think it's gonna be, I guess, almost like historical in a way, because, you know, um, I, I, I always see the the Hollywood movies where there's a bunch of, you know, it's, it's, it's great. I love to see, you know, black leads, but it always seems like it's like in a, in a, unfortunately, like a, a like a sad or slave kind of type of, Sure. Driven movie where it's like now you should care because it's it's dealing with it yeah. and you know something like that or some you know yeah. a person's a color de demise. So it's really good to see this as like a you know um it, it's different and I think a lot of people are going to really enjoy enjoy that aspect of it. Yeah, I hope so. You know, I I feel the same way. I feel like a lot of the movies out there they feel like they have some alternative motive that isn't for the audience. That's for mm. something else that um, it just feels like everything is being kind of held back and kind of, you know, sprinkled out by something that is yeah. not, you know, uh, a creative entity. We'll put it that way. It, <laughs> there's something else going on behind that. And I like an explosion of just, you know, uncensored attitude. Um, you know, our movie's gonna be very gory. You know, it's, <laughs> it's gonna be hard R rating, you know, it's not like we're, <laughs> oh, it's got to be, it's like, we want to light the floodgates out and just really express ourselves, you know, yeah. everybody. And I'm highly collaborative. So I want everybody to feel like they can bring their best to it. And, you know, we can all, you know, bring our best work out together without restraints, without worrying like, oh, we might offend this part of the audience or it won't, it won't, it's like, I don't want to worry about any of that. Let's just yeah. make something creative, you know? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. 
can can you can you talk about like just also the people who are also in it like some who who else is in the uh, movie some amazing actors are attached to this yes, project by yes. the way i mean like wow yes absolutely yeah so well we well you know one of the coolest and funnest one is eric roberts is going to be playing himself <laughs> uh do it doing a, a really fun send up of his of his uh career and his and like the the myth of eric roberts and i'm a huge eric roberts fan he's one of my favorite actors so um miyosha you you um had a had a had a good relationship with him and were able to bring him aboard so i'm, I'm eternally grateful for that because wrote him into the script before we knew we we could ever get him <laughs> um but uh yeah so that and then um my longtime friend and and uh artistic collaborator Charles Chudabala. I've been working with him ever since I did Choose Their Kill for Eli Roth and Crypt TV, all through Ugly Sweater Party, 16 Bits. He's in there. And it's just kind of like the crew that I've been like, kind of like working with over the years. So Kevin Caliber, who played Wax Waster in 16 Bits, uh, you know, Hunter Johnson from Ugly Sweater Party, um, Jody Barton, who worked with Ugly Sweater, me on Ugly Sweater Party. I've been wanting to work with him again forever. Um, Jeremiah, Benjamin, all sorts of great people. And and the other really awesome thing is our choreographer is Akira Armstrong, a pretty big movement, who is an amazing choreographer, amazing person. And she's going to bring such energy and style to uh, the movements, the dancing, because we want this to have that attitude too. We want this to have like, you know, I feel like a lot of musicals now kind of cheese out. It's like yeah. no one's dancing or maybe they're singing and, maybe, and it just kind of feels like they're going half measures. And yeah. it's like, we want it all. We want to go all in and have like, you know, the singing, the dancing, the gore, the passion, just like it's going to be all, all over the screen. I love it. I love it. Yeah, no, I, you're right. That a lot of musicals now, it doesn't really have the dancing I did see the color purple the new the remake or the reimagined version um and I I really enjoyed it I think that's what yeah. the element of dance was there like they were dancing okay. and there's like all these extras and you're just like whoa what's what's happening it's this is amazing mm -hmm. so it was uh mm -hmm. so I think that definitely adds an element for sure to to um the film like it just elevates it for yeah for sure. and to give each character their own kind of like moves and their own kind of like style it's just gonna be great it's gonna, we're gonna create a whole like world in this movie it's gonna be cool i love that oh, so for those that um uh are listening you know what's something because i have there's a lot of listeners that that write back and they always say they love the episode but what they what they really love is like advice for yeah. those that want to try to make a movie or those that want to get into music and all that uh you know either one can start but what was what's what's some advice for those that want to like get into making their own project or getting to making music why don't you go ahead on or you can take this one first yeah the thing with that it, it, I, I really kind of meditated on that because I get asked that a lot and not the typical you know just believe in yourself I mean those are a given you know we've heard that and and, and like I said you know but I really don't delve deeper into the advice that I would give to either your, like a, a younger artist or, um, and what I came up with is the, know your value, know that your contributions, whether they're large or mediocre, they're, I feel like they're just as equally important as any of the major people out there. You know, we put our hard work, blood, sweat, and tears in each and every one of these projects, whether it's film, music, acting, or whatever. Um, so I would, my suggestion to any artist out there, creator, is just to know your value. Know that, you know, like, don't measure up to like, or compare to someone else. You know, I'm not, I'm not gonna compare my acting skills to Will Smith, you know, because that's his journey. Um, he's great, but I'm great also. Um, and my contributions, my, whatever I do, they're just as important, you know, it's just different levels, it's different paths, but it, it all means for the same thing. We, we are very passionate people. We are creatives. We are motivators and inspirational people that want to continue to throw out these wonderful projects in the universe. So that'll be my suggestion. That, that's great. Oh yeah, man. That's great. Um, <laughs> yeah. To, to echo that. Um, I think the biggest problem now is that, you know, it, it's tough to be inspired right now. It's tough to find your voice. I think right now, 
there's so much going on in social media and everything like that. And like attention spans are so, you know, quick and short. It's tough to like even find the thing that inspires you truly that isn't just kind of like disposable. So I'm, I'm grateful that I had an advantage growing up without social media so that I could just sit and watch movies like from beginning to end i would collect vhs tapes i mean i would just stay up all night by myself just watching movies like i'm gonna watch all the mad max movies in a row let's go <laughs> just by myself you know just like watching it obsessing over the camera moves going like wow look at that choice there look at these look at how cool these outfits are and you just you had the time to really dig in and just find out what what really inspires you what lights your fire and so uh, my recommendation would be to put your phone aside, uh, whatever that you're into, whether it be music, movies, art, whatever, dive into that, get quiet, quiet everybody else. This is for you. This is your journey. You can, you know, listen to music. That's fine. If that helps you while you're going through stuff, through pictures and stuff like that. But if you want to be a filmmaker, ask yourself why you want to be a filmmaker. Do you want to be a filmmaker because you want to be at the Academy Awards or do you want to make a filmmaker because you love a certain kind of movie and you want to make your version of that movie. You want to, you want to put your dreams out onto screen and you want everybody to live your dream and to be inspired by your dream. Cause that's how it works. We're all just, you know, feeding each other dreams. And like, unless you find that spark and it, and you can't think about money, you can't think about, I want to be like honor is saying, you can't think about emulating someone else. I want to be like that. And that can be scary because, you know, my work is weird. My work is very different. And uh, I don't really fit into a box very well with anything that I do. And uh, sometimes that used to feel like like a struggle. Like maybe I should try and be a little bit more mainstream. Maybe I should try and sh sand off some of those rough edges. Maybe I should just make, I keep, get, I keep getting told by people, just make like a haunted house movie with the family and like, like an insidious, just do one of those. And it's just like, I just can't do it. It's just like, I like, and that's not, doesn't mean that I don't like that stuff. It's just my the tools that I have won't allow me to do that without losing my soul along the way. Mm -hmm. So it's just, I can't do it. So I have to go lean into my weirdness and the stuff that I like and that, 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 that buzzes me, you know? And so that's where I'm leaning, you know, and that's where we're going. So luckily we found each other and we can all kind of make dreams happen together. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I love that guys. That's great advice. Cause I, I, I actually was talking to a friend of mine about that, about how like sometimes, you know, you know, you, you, you in this career, you, 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 you're, you, we're moving, we're doing the things, and then it's like, it's sometimes some, it's slower periods, yeah. and you're like, oh man, should I, should I, um, change my direction and 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 do what, like you said, the mainstream is doing? Should I do, uh, comply? And then you're like, no, but then like you said, like we said, like it's like selling your soul almost, like you're not actually being you. So mm -hmm. uh, just being yourself. And you know, you know, embracing all of all of that, all of your sides, um, no matter what, is is just. I think that's absolutely admirable and inspiring for like a lot of people because I think a lot of people think they have to change themselves in order to be, because you know, people from the outside yeah. skin and it's like, oh, it's so like, I don't know, you know, they yeah. have this like perception of hollywood <laughs> but well, yeah and, and and they're not wrong you know what i mean i mean like a lot of people sell out every day and a lot yeah. of people some people get get rich off that but it's like um what's what's the use of that like you only get one life uh, as far as i know uh so <laughs> you know i i mean it would i if if i was just to write what I think would sell and run after that train and just do that i might as well be working at a desk job anywhere because that doesn't have the same, you know, ignition for me in terms of uh, wanting to bring something that isn't there already. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Versus just kind of copy photocopying and being yeah. like, let me try and chase on that one, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it's, it's tough. It's not easy, but you, the other thing I would say is that relationships are everything. Yes. And I think a lot of people just try and reach out to like heavy hitters and be like, please green light me, give me my thing. <laughs> I would recommend make small stuff, uh, find collaborators that you like on small stuff. And then you guys rise together yeah. and then you build together and you create a team that you know is dependable and creative. Um, that's the way that I would recommend doing it because, um, uh, you know, relationships <laughs> are just everything. And, and, you know, it takes time though. It's not going to happen instantly. You yes. know, and a lot of people don't want to hear this, but 
you should probably just make a movie for nothing with your friends. And I know you've heard it before, but you should do that. And uh, don't worry about distribution. Don't worry about, oh, but you know, Netflix, the specs, they say it has to look like it has to be this camera, make whatever you want to make with what you have available to you. You don't know who could see that. that. You don't know what festival might pick that up. Um, you got a calling card now. And maybe that's what makes you different. The fact that you shot it on not the highest end camera, the fact that the sound's not great, but maybe the attitude's great. Maybe the yeah. energy's great, you know? So don't sell yourself short. Don't say, everybody else can tell you no. Don't ever tell yourself no. Yes. You know what I mean? Love yeah. that. Don't, that's, you just went, took us to church there. I love I, love, <laughs> <laughs> I, love, <laughs> I was good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love that. Don't, I tell no. myself this a lot. So, you, <laughs> know, you, you know, it's a practice. You, you know, yeah. you really have to keep it up. I'm sure Definitely. you both know that, you know, it's a practice to kind of like be like, you know, get out of that negative space, you know, let's go to work. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's it's so true because it's like and, and, you know, not to harp on this, but like I really look at and I, and I for those for those that listening, I, honestly, I can say when I started, like I have a mentor that I talk to and, you know, I talk to him pretty often. He keeps me on the straight and narrow path. Uh, so I, I love that, that I can, he can like discipline me from time to time. So I don't, I don't get out of the, like, you know, in my head. Um, sure. But I think about like, he always says like, look at what you, what you came from, how you started to where you are now and mm. always be grateful for everything that you have, every opportunity, just, and, yeah. and having that mantra of saying, thank you, God, <laughs> like daily is, is a way for when like when things are slower th or when things are going, uh, you can keep that same attitude. It actually changes a lot of things in your perception and perspective of how we this industry is. Yeah, so one hundred percent. Thank you guys for coming on. This was awesome. Yes. Where where can oh, people find you on social media and uh, to reach out to you about this movie and and getting involved? Yeah, uh, I'm all my socials is just my name. It's just Aaron, at Aaron Mento, A A R O N M E N T O. My production company is Ocular Migraine, named after the eye that got me started. Uh, eyes fine now, by the way. It was just temporary, but um, God. it got got it got me going. Um, yeah, so just uh, at Aaron Mento. Awesome. Nice. And you guys can find me at uh, IG Honorary Music H O N O R E Music. Um, my official website is honorymusic.com. Um, my my current album, Purple, is out on all streaming platforms. If you want to, if you're curious about the kind of music yeah, that I do, R&B music, um, check it out. Purple is a really great album. I'm very proud of it. Self-written, self-produced. Um, <clears throat> working on new albums this year, along with this amazing project, Jam of the Dam. You guys don't want to miss it. Visually, uh, musically, spiritually, bloody <laughs> evil dead <laughs> prince the vibes they're all here we have this amazing team trust me it's the movie you've been wanting to see for the longest and it'll be out there real soon absolutely cool. and and anybody who's hearing this who might want to get involved in the movie might know someone who you know uh, might help us like get in a location or anything um you know we're open to everything right now yes. you know so we have a pitch deck we have um, about eight or nine songs fully completed from Honoré. We have uh, a sampler mix. We got the poster. We have all sorts of materials. So anybody who wants to get involved at any level, uh, feel free to reach out to Miyoshi, myself, or Honoré. Yes, please, please do. And thank you all for listening. And always remember to live, love, laugh. We'll see you guys next time.